Hey guys, my name is Mike and this is my introduction to stop motion animation. So today guys, we're going to be making an animated short story. And in order to do that, we're going to need one of these. This is called a storyboard. And basically what this is, is a plan of how you're going to actually make your animation. It doesn't have to be the prettiest drawing in the world. And it's certainly not one for the granny's fridge but it is a very important part of the storytelling process. You see, each of these little images here represents a different shot or scene that we're going to create in the Stop Motion Studio app. Then once we've animated all those shots, we're going to save those videos and then put them all together in the InShot video editing app. So the first thing I did, guys, when I had this idea was I looked up the recipe for making gingerbread dough. And then I built my animation around that process which is something I'm gonna go through with you in a few moments. But first, I just wanna mention a couple of things. For this video, guys, I make a lot of props using polymer clay. Now, I've used a little bit of this stuff before, and the big advantage of using this stuff is that when you've made your creations, you can then bake them in the oven by putting them in, them in there for 25 minutes at 110 degrees. And when you take them out and you let them completely cool, they become a solid piece. And it also says this on every pack of polymer clay as well, guys. But regardless, it's still very important that you get an adult to help you with this part. Also, guys, today's video is going to be done a little different to previous videos. Because there was so much to cover, we have to move at a much faster pace. So it's more like a breakdown rather than a tutorial. But most of these things we've already covered in previous tutorials. So today we're just primarily focusing on the storytelling element. So let's get into it guys, and we're going to start by making our storyboard. So as I said guys, the first thing we're going to be starting with is a storyboard. And what we want to do is, we just want to get a sheet of paper, a blank sheet of paper, and we need to find something rectangular shaped. So I'm just going to be using this piece of Lego here. And we're going to start drawing these rectangular shapes across the page. In fact, we're going to fill the whole page with these rectangular shapes. We're then going to start drawing our story out inside each of these boxes. Like here, the first scene I'm drawing is the scene where we'll be mixing all the different ingredients. A good tip when you're doing these drawings, guys, is think about those rectangular boxes as if they were the actual screen on your device. And as you finish each drawing, guys, be sure to write down what action takes place underneath. And then you can start thinking about what colors are going to be on your set. These decisions are never final, but it does give you a good idea of what color things might be later on, especially during the model making phase. So now I'm going to continue on drawing from left to right, drawing images into those boxes that's going to help tell my story. So we can see here in the first shot guys, is the shot of the mixer. And then I have a close up shot where I'm mixing all the dry ingredients. And then I add all the dry ingredients back into the mixer before wrapping it up in cling film and placing it into the fridge for 30 minutes. That's when we do a close-up on the clock. Then we roll out our dough, we cut out our gingerbread man shape, and then we bake that in the oven. We're then going to use these icing tubes to decorate the gingerbread man before he runs off. At which point I slam my hand down on this red icing tube, and then it's going to squirt all over the screen, which is going to slide downwards and reveal Merry Christmas. And this one here is for the title at the start of the animation where I decided I'm going to use gingerbread text. And I'm going to make that using the tracing method that we used in episode 3. So this is the drawing I'm going to trace and I'm going to roll out this gingerbread coloured clay and I'm going to trace over that using this blunt pencil. And once that's traced, I'm then going to get my palette knife and I'm going to isolate each letter and cut all around them. I'm then going to get a brush with some really hard bristles and I'm going to dab each letter. And that's going to create a gingerbread texture on the letters. As you can see here on the letter N. I'm then going to decorate the letters using some white and some green and some red and I don't really know exactly what I'm doing here so I'm just kind of going with it. I 
And for the word making, I just decided to do that more freehand. So I just rolled out these small pieces of clay and curled up each end. And for the letter A, I'm using this light blue. And I'm just using the tracing method again. And this time I'm gonna decorate it using these small white dots. So now that all the letters are done, it's just a case of moving them around and finding the best position for the animation. I also thought it'd be kind of nice to use these colored lines outside the letters and animate them during the animation. And I'm gonna do that by cutting a small piece off each one in between each picture. So it looks like they're getting smaller. And I also have the onion skin turned down here so I can place them back exactly where I took them up. And I'll give the gingerbread man text a little bit of movement too. So then I end up with something that looks like this. So we're going to be using cardboard to make the kitchen countertop and I just thought I'd show you because there's two different types of cardboard you can get. There's thick cardboard like this which is great for making walls or solid structures but it's not the easiest to cut with scissors. So for most other things I'd always use this smaller thinner cardboard. So we're going to start building our set now guys and I'm going to cut down one side of this cardboard box here and it should open right up. Then I'm going to lift all the lids upright and use some cell tape to bind them all together. Then I'm going to add this little box shape for our countertop. And then I'm going to start sticking down these slabs of scrap clay. And the reason why I'm doing this guys is because it'll give the other clay something to stick to. But also I'm going to overlap the top of the wall here so that everything will stay in place during the animation. And here is all that other clay guys that I have already pre-rolled. And I should mention guys, I'm using plasticine here for doing the walls. So we're gonna start at the top and start putting down the slabs of green. And then I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom with the white the whole way across. And I'm just gonna use my ruler and my palette knife to cut a line across and just remove all the excess white. And for the tiles on the kitchen wall, I just made this rectangular shape using some light cardboard. And I'm just gonna use that as a stencil and cut out all the black tiles. Then I'm gonna place them across the wall and try and keep it as even as I possibly can. And finally, I'm gonna put those blue slabs across the bottom where the drawers are gonna be. As for the countertop guys, if I mix this white and gray halfway together, I end up with this marble effect. So that's what I'll be doing, but on a much larger scale. And then I'm going to roll it out and try and make it as wide as I possibly can. Then I'm going to come in with my steel ruler and just cut a straight edge all the way around. So I end up with something that looks like this. Then we just place that on our set. Then using cardboard as a stencil again, I'm just gonna cut out these white lines that I'm gonna put between the green and the white on a set, just to take the ugly look off the dividing line. For the cabinet doors and drawers, I'm also using uh, cardboard as a stencil, just to keep all the doors the exact same size and just to make things so much easier, guys. I'll use my palette knife to round off the corners and then do the same thing for the drawers. So now I'm just gonna cut some handles and I'm gonna try and keep them all the same size. And when I'm placing them on the drawers, I'm thinking about how I want them to look on set. Lastly then guys, I'm gonna get a toothpick and I'm gonna twizzle the toothpick at the top and at the bottom of the handle, where the screws would be. Now we'll just go back and place them on our set. Next guys, I'm gonna be working with balsa wood. It usually comes in a bag of random shapes and sizes, but I'm gonna be focused on these ones here to kind of look like floorboards. So what we're gonna do first guys is get our ruler and our marker and we're gonna start drawing floorboards onto the balsa wood. Then I'm gonna get some watered down yellow ochre acrylic paint and just gonna stain the balsa wood. Don't color it completely because you want it to look like an actual floorboard. So I made four of these in total, and whenever there's a little bit of the floor showing in the animation, I can just interchange these to hide it. 
So for the mixer, I just did this really rough drone and I know that I need the mixer to open at the halfway point and I also need the beater to be able to do a full rotation. So first I made the basic shape using aluminium wire and then I covered the top and the bottom using tin foil. Next I roll out some red polymer clay and you can already see the difference in texture with this stuff compared to plasticine. So then I cover the top and the bottom of the blender and cut off the excess. So for the bowl of the mixer, I'm going to cover the top of this glass with Vaseline. Then I'm going to roll out some clay and cut the edges straight on each side. Then I'm just going to roll the glass along the clay. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess. I'm also going to trim a line across the very top as well, so that we have a nice straight edge. Then we're going to add a base for the bowl. And we're going to put some clay on the beater as well. And we're just going to fine tune that with the back of the brush. So next guys, we're going to bake these in the oven for 25 minutes. And we're going to put the whole lot in, the glass and all. And when it comes out, it should look something like this. Now normally I would always say when I take something out of the oven, let it cool completely before even touching it but we need to try and remove this glass as quickly as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the bowl and twisting the glass. And because that Vaseline is there, we're able to release the glass and it gives us a perfect bowl. And once they've completely cooled, I'm just gonna come in with some silver acrylic paint and I'm gonna paint the bowl and the beater. So next guys, we're going to make all our ingredients and we're going to do that using a lot of polymer clay. And you can see here, I used a stencil to make this sugar bag. And I also made this butter knife along with some butter, which was probably the more difficult things to make. And I made a plate to put all the dry ingredients on. Here I made our shakers for our ginger and our allspice. Then I made a measuring cup using the handle of the brush as a mold. And I did the same thing here for making this ramekin also. And I used the very end of the handle to create the hollow in the spoon. And I used the toothpick to create the texture on the cinnamon. And I also made these shapes here guys, which I'm gonna swap around during the animation to make it look like the sugar is pouring out of the bag. And I did the same thing as well for when I'm pouring the cup of molasses. And just to give these shapes more of a sugary effect, I decided to cover them in PVA glue and then dip them in a big bowl of actual brown sugar and then I just left them to dry. And for the gingerbread dough guys, I mixed some brown with some yellow. And now I'm just going to make some props that I can have on the countertop in the background during the animation. Just to make the kitchen look a bit more realistic. So first I made these three jars and then I made some kitchen roll using some polymer clay and some actual kitchen roll. I also made this cup holder and three cups that I molded again on the top of the brush and I just trim around the top of it using the palette knife to get that perfect straight edge. Then I made a bread bin using some tin foil as a filler. And I also made a kettle that I'm going to use in a later scene. And again, I'm just using the tip of the brush to create that hollow in the spout. And lastly, I'm just gonna bake all these props in the oven. So this is gonna be the first scene that I'm animating, guys. And then immediately after this, we're gonna do the mixture scene. So you can see here, I have everything laid out. And whenever I'm adding ginger in the scene, I'm just gonna use a small bit of actual ginger. And you can see I have all my sugar lined up here and my molasses also. So the first thing we're doing guys is adding the flour and in my right hand I have actual flour that I'm slowly adding during the animation and the same goes for the ginger and the allspice. So here's how it looks on the Stop Motion Studio app and I'm just moving my hand a small piece at a time and that's why having the onion skin on is so important guys so I can see my previous picture and it's easy for me to line my hand up exactly where I left off. Which is also really handy in some cases when I have to take my left hand completely off the set and I want to get it back on where it was. 
And the last two ingredients we add here then is just the cinnamon and one egg. So next we're going to mix all our ingredients in the mixer. And here's how the set looks guys. I got the light shining over the set and I got my camera set up. And here's how it looks on the actual device. So we start off by opening the mixer and now I'm pouring the sugar. And you can see I'm swapping out each of those sugar lumps that we made to make it look like it's pouring out of the bag. And when I swipe down for the butter in between the pitcher, I just cut the butter in half. So it looks like I just get it all in one clean swipe. So then I just turn on the machine and I animate the beater spinning around a few times before I add my dry ingredients. And lastly then guys, I pour the molasses. So you can see here me swapping out each of the molasses as it's pouring in. Then I get a few pictures of the beater spinning around before I remove the bowl completely. Next guys, we're just gonna pour the dough onto some cling film and this is a pretty straightforward shot. I just pour it into the center and then pull in each corner. So next guys, we put the dough into the fridge, but first we need to make the fridge. And I did that using some cardboard and I used some white plasticine for the interior of the fridge. Then I used the scissors to create the fridge door. And I used a coloring pencil to create the panel like texture you'd see inside a fridge. Then I rolled out some clay for the door and trimmed off the excess. And I added a couple of shelves to the door as well and also the interior of the fridge. I just stuck these aluminium wires straight across to create a shelf. Then I rolled out a big slab of yellow plasticine and I placed that around the fridge and just again trimmed off the excess. And then I did the same thing with the front of the fridge, the two doors. And remember guys, I'm not gonna make a whole fridge here. I'm only gonna make enough that the camera is gonna see. And any remaining cardboard that's shown, I'm just gonna paint with some white acrylic paint. So lastly guys, I made a little hole in the back of the fridge here and I'm gonna shove in these three LED Christmas lights and cover up the rest using some tin foil just to create that light effect when I open the door of the fridge. And next then I'm just gonna quickly make some contents for the fridge. So I made this carton of milk and I also made this carton of juice. These are gonna go in the door of the fridge and that's why I'm only making the top half. I also made some carrots and just used the toothpick to create the carrot like texture and just added a few small green leaves to the top. Next I made another essential, some broccoli and I did it by just creating these little green balls and texturing them with the brush. And lastly guys, a plate of cheese. And now we're going to animate the dough going into the fridge and then we're going to immediately animate the dough coming out of the fridge. So you can see me going around the back of the set there turning on the light just as I open the door of the fridge. So while the dough is resting in the fridge for 30 minutes we're going to have a close up of the clock counting down and then we're going to come back in and remove the dough. But we're going to do this in two separate scenes guys and later in InShot I'm going to cut this scene in half and place that close up of the clock in the middle. So for making the clock guys, I'm just going to get this light cardboard and I'm just going to use this bowl to create this circular shape and then cut that out with some scissors. Then I'm going to roll out some black plasticine, place it around, trim the excess off the back. We're going to add another white circle and just going to add these little shapes for the numbers on the clock. Lastly guys, I just made the hands of the clock using a small piece of aluminium wire. And I'm also quickly going to make this smaller clock which we saw in the background of the fridge animation. And for the clock scene I have the device looking down and I also put the clock on some green paper to match the green on the wall. And I'm just going to slowly animate the big hand 30 minutes while also slightly animating the small hand also. So in this next scene guys we're going to roll out the dough and we're going to cut the shape of the gingerbread man. So here I have a roller, I have a gingerbread cutter. I also made this tray for when we're putting them in and out of the oven later. 
and I also made this sieve that I shaped using a golf ball. So this is how the setup looks guys and I have the iPad again looking straight down and here's how it looks in the stop motion studio app. So see here with the sieve of flour guys, I have the sieve in one hand and I have flour in my right hand and I'm just slowly adding flour onto the set, trying to get my hand back in position and then taking another picture. And when it came to actually rolling out the dough guys, I just took the dough off the set and rolled it with a bigger roller before placing it back on the set and then taking my next picture. And the same here guys, the gingerbread shape is already cut and it's just a case of me removing the excess dough. And when you play that in stop motion, here's how it looks. So next guys, we need to put this gingerbread man in the oven. So I made this basic shape using some cardboard. I also used a little bit of aluminium wire so I can open and close the oven door. And I'm also going to use these battery powered night lights. And I just made these little holes in the back of the oven that I'm going to stick them through. And it's just going to give the illusion of flickering light inside the oven. Then I sacrificed this packet of toothpicks to make the glass on the oven door. And painted all the interior with black acrylic paint. So later during the animation, we're only going to see the front of the oven. So I don't need to worry about what the sides look like. So I roll out this green polymer clay for the front of the oven. And I then use my palette knife to cut out the door. And I'm also going to cut out where the glass panel will be on the door. Then for the hob of the oven, I just got these two circular shapes. One slightly smaller than the other. And I'm going to use them as the four hobs. So first I just traced them onto some light cardboard and then cut them with some scissors before putting them in place just to see how it looks. Next I'm going to cover the cardboard using the same polymer green I used on the front of the cooker. And then I'm going to cover each hob with black polymer clay. Then I rolled out these lines of grey polymer clay that I'm just going to place around each hob. And for the middle area of the oven, I wanted to create this stone effect. So I used some balsa wood just to create these lines straight across. And I also used some balsa wood to create these individual blocks before finally using the back of the brush to create that stone effect on each block. For the switches on the oven, I just stuck some polymer clay onto the back of some thumbtacks so when painting the stones guys, I just did one coat of grey and while I waited for that to dry, I just did a silver coat on the top of the oven. Then I went back in with a lighter coat of the same grey colour before highlighting each stone with just a small piece of pure white. So this is how the oven looks in the finish guys. And we see here we have our door that we can pull down. And we can also remove the hob of the oven as well, which is going to be really important for the close up animation later on. So I'm going to start here guys by showing you very quickly how I set up for this scene. So because it's from a slightly different angle, I'm just going to use some cardboard and some carded paper and I'm just going to create this different angle in the kitchen. And once I have everything in place, this is how it looks. And this is the angle we get from the device and I have my light shining down on the set. And if I come around the back, you can see I have the night lights here in position and I'm ready to switch them off during the animation. So now I switch off the night lights at the back and I'm going to remove the gingerbread man from the oven. And again guys, this is one of them scenes I'm going to be cutting later on in InShot. So this is how the animation looks and it's going to be right at this point here where I'm going to be cutting it. So next is like a semi close up of my hand reaching in and turning on the oven. And you can see me now going around the back of the set and switching on all those night lights.
Then I'm going to put my left hand back in position and continue on the animation. And I'm going to do the same thing now guys, turning off the oven. But first I need to put the gingerbread man in the oven because that's where he's going to be at this point in the animation. And here's how that animation looks then guys. So next is the close up of the gingerbread man baking in the oven. And how we're going to do that is, we're going to get some chalk pastels and we're going to scrape a very small piece of brown chalk pastel and then we're going to dab this hard brush onto the chalk. If you don't have a hard brush guys, you can just get a soft brush and trim the bristles and it will do the same thing. So next we're going to cover the brush with some brown chalk pastel and we're just going to dab the gingerbread man all over. And you can see the difference here on the back of the gingerbread man to the front. The colour and texture has completely changed. And for the close up animation guys, we're going to be doing the exact same technique, except we're going to be taking pictures in between. And it turns out to look something like this. So next guys, we're going to make up some decorating tubes for decorating our gingerbread man. So I'm going to make a red, a blue, a green, a white and a black. And I'm just going to use this toothpick to create the cap and also to create the little hole in the nozzle. So next guys, I'm just going to create an animation of my hand removing each color. And then I'm going to cut those videos every time that my hand has left the screen. I also remove the colors in accordance to how I'm decorating the gingerbread man. It's important that I do this because I'll be cutting all these scenes and putting them together later on. So first the red, then we decorate them with the green, then we decorate them with the black, then we decorate the white, and then finally the blue, and that's when the gingerbread man runs away. So the next shot is a close up of decorating the gingerbread man using the decorating tubes. And you see the green I'm using for these buttons here, I'm organizing them from smallest to large, and I'm just gonna swap them out during the animation. And I'm doing the same thing for the gingerbread man's mouth with three different pieces that I'm gonna swap in and out during the animation. And this will just give the illusion that the icing is pouring out of the icing tube. So I'm just about to start the animation here now and I'm just showing you that I have everything in place so I can find them easily and swap them out during the animation. And as you can see I even have the white icing lined out exactly how it's gonna appear on the gingerbread man. And this is how it looks in stop motion studio. So you can see when my hand gets there, I just swap it out for one piece. And then I'm going to take a picture. Then I'm going to swap it out for the bigger red piece. Then I'm going to take another picture. And then I'm going to come in with the last piece and then take another picture. And it will just look like it's blobbing out of the icing tube. And now I'll just do the same thing with all the other colors. But you can see the huge advantage guys to having everything kind of ready there before you start your shoot. And when I place down the white icing, I'm using the tube itself to hide the icing in between the pictures and it looked like it's pouring out of it. And that's why I'm pouring everything from right to left. And lastly, I'm just gonna animate his eyes and have him blink and look to the right. And this is how that looks then guys. So this is the last scene then before the end title and you can see here I'm after carving a window in our set. I have this little mountain placed outside the window that the gingerbread man is going to run down. And you may recognize this guys, this is the background set that we used in episode 2 and I just have this plastic box here holding it up. So I'm just going to do a quick test here to see how it looks on camera. And as my hand moves to the right, we see the window is open and the gingerbread man is running down the hill. I also made this small little armature using some milliput and some aluminium wire that I'm just going to stick to the back of the gingerbread man as he's running down the hill. And we're only going to see the back of him of course, so you can see I get a little bit of movement here with the arms and the legs. 
So at the end of this scene guys, I slam my hand down on the red icing tube and that's why I have this wire here feeding through the set and it's going to come up through the counter right around here and I'm going to angle that towards the camera and I have all my red clay here rolled out ready to add onto that wire and we're just going to take about three pictures and it's going to give the illusion that the red icing is coming towards the screen. And this is how the set looks just before the shoot guys and you can see I added some curtains to the window as well and I sellotaped some aluminium wire behind the curtains so this way I can animate them using stop motion and make it look like the curtains are blowing in the wind. So the first colour I'm adding here is red and it's super important that I put this in the exact position where I have that wire so when I slam my hand down on it at the end of this scene that the wire is in place and it looks like it's coming directly out of the tube. And then I just add in all the other colours and it doesn't really matter where exactly I leave them on the counter. So this is the part where I come in with the blue icing tube and he's going to be gone. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting down little crumbs and now I come in, I'm looking for him and as I'm moving to the right you can see I have to move around the back of the set and animate the character and then come back around and try and get my hand in position and of course get a little bit of movement in them curtains also so unfortunately guys my screen record did stop in a couple of seconds but I did get just a little bit of me digging out the wire and you can kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. So you can see the first bit of wire coming out there and I think I have about five different wires there all together. Now I can show you the actual frames themselves which are these three here and when we play the animation in real time it looks like this. So the end title begins with the screen covered in red icing. The icing is then going to drop from the top to the bottom of the screen and reveal the words Merry Christmas. So in order to get this shot guys I took a pane of glass from a TV unit. Don't use any glass this is the glass that's kind of rounded on the sides so it's safe to use and I have it standing evenly on these four pillars that I made with Lego and basically guys we have the camera looking down and we're going to animate the text and we're also going to animate on the glass over the text. So this is how it looks through the phone and you can see I have plenty of room there to put my hand in underneath and animate the text. And this is the clay then that's going to be dropping down the screen and I have that on some paper as well so that I don't smudge the glass during the animation. So now I just place that clay over the text and start taking pictures. And I'm just going to slowly start moving it downwards to reveal the text. And once the text is starting to come into view, I'm just going to move the letters slightly. Just to create a little bit of movement in the letters also. So I wanted to bring these two shots into InShot and put them side by side and see how they look when they play together. So you can see them both there on the bottom of the screen on the timeline and when we play them together you can see that the transition there looks just fine. And if I scroll back along the timeline I just want to show you again exactly how they transition from one shot into the next. So one more thing guys I want to show you in the stop motion studio app. When you're doing an animation like this that has multiple shots from different angles, it's much easier to do each shot as an individual project in the stop motion studio app. That way if you have to edit a shot, you can just go in and easily do so. So now we're going to bring all our animations into InShot and start putting all our shots together on the timeline. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this shot here with the mixer around the midpoint because I want to add in that shot where I'm mixing all the dry ingredients and then go back to the mixer. So you can see now on the timeline I'm going to move the dry ingredients into the middle and now when we play 
it's going to cut to the dry ingredients. And then as soon as this shot is finished, it's going to go back to the mixer shot and play out the rest of that animation. Another quick example of this guys is when I'm decorating the gingerbread man. And you can see the bottom of the screen here, I've already cut up all those individual shots. And now I'm going to match all them clips up together by colour to help tell the story, starting of course with the red. By shooting all these videos together during the stop motion phase and cutting them afterwards in InShot, it helps tell your story so much better, but it's also so much easier for you to animate. And I'll show you what I mean now guys, that I have all these scenes cut and they're all side by side. So here I reach for the black decorating tube and then I decorate him and then I place it down. Then I reach for the white and then I decorate him again. But you know guys from watching me that these are three different shots. We just cut them up and put them together to help tell that part of the story. So this is what it looks like on the timeline with all the different shots there. And you can see I've done the same thing with the fridge. I cut the fridge halfway through the scene and I put that 30 minute clock in the middle. So the last thing then guys is the sound and I made a lot of these sound effects myself. If you go on your device, most devices, Samsung or Apple, they'll all have this voice recorder app already on the phone and they're really really good for recording your own sound effects so i just hit record and i just got this empty bowl and i'm going to pour some rice into it and we're going to see how that sounds so i'm going to use this sound effect when i'm pouring the sugar into the bowl so we'll just save it on our device as pouring sugar and immediately guys it goes into your sounds in your InShot app and we can then place that on the timeline. So another quick example guys is when I swipe the butter with the knife on the plate. And one last example guys, I'm going to make a quick recording of the plate placing on this tile here and that's going to be our countertop. So that's how I created about 90% of the sound effects that I used in this animation and you can see them all at the bottom of the screen there now. That long clip at the top of the timeline is the music that we have playing throughout the animation. And this is how it all turned out in the end, guys.
So that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. And sadly, that is going to be the end of this series too. So hopefully this series gave you a little bit of insight to the different materials and different techniques used for making stop motion animation. And I really think once you know the materials that you can use, you're only limited by your own imagination. So download the app guys, it's called Stop Motion Studio. Give it a go, you might surprise yourselves. Thanks for watching guys and stay safe.